It's in the 60s again out here this morning. It feels great. We've got sunshine coming through the trees and we're only gonna have a high of, they, I think they said 79 with only a slight chance for showers. So shaping up to be a fine Wednesday here in Carolina. I'm gonna try to sneak away with my buddy this morning. And if the other cats catch up with us, oh well. Uh oh. He's catching up sooner than later. Well, he's pretty upset and I had to carry him most of the way up here. Stripe is down at the curve and so is gray or slate. Um, Stripe was pretty determined because I tossed a stick or two in his direction and um, that really didn't deter him too much. And then Tux was really mad and growled and <sighs> yeah, walking walking up this little grade and carrying him he's not light all's good unless stripe makes himself uh come through he's right on the other side over there hopefully he can use some good judgment maybe a slight stick toss that way because i really can't have him racing i didn't hit him stripes behind the big tree i really 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 like stripe so I don't want to do anything mean or not nice to him. If he had been the one that had started on the walk with me, I would have gone with him instead of Tux. That would have been fine too. No, we're not turning around and going that way. We're going this way. Come on, come on. I won't be surprised if there's another fight after I go in the house despite trying to leave Tux in a safe spot because he's really fired up now. It's on, not buddy. really Tux's fault because Stripe's the one that followed us, but Tux got really worked up, and I just know right now that if Stripe comes near him, he's going to pounce him. So I put him in timeout for a few minutes, and I sprayed some of that helpful feline pheromone over there. And um, I'm just going to go take care of Panther and finish getting ready to go out. And um, I will release him, but you know, five or ten minutes to chill is okay. I've let him out. I don't see anybody else around. He was only in there ten minutes max. He's still sort of agitated, but hopefully he won't uh, run into anyone and he'll settle down some more. Gotta protect my boy. Marty settled down in the chair where she'll stay for hours probably. Tux has wandered off and is hopefully not near anyone that matters. And uh, I am headed out by myself. I'll explain more about that in a little bit. Oh, Ruby, Ruby, I didn't plug you in yesterday, girl. Hopefully you have a reasonable amount of charge. Hey, Stripey. You gonna be a good boy while I'm gone? Oh, he has something. A frog, a bird, a mouse, I don't know, but he's got something. I can't tell what it is. I think it's a mouse. Could be a lizard, too. It's not a snake. I don't see legs. Doesn't seem like anything that could hurt him. Yeah, I started out with 187 miles, so I must have charged her all the way up, made a short trip into town, and then not plugged her back in. Uh, for Like for Taekwondo last night, she was full before Taekwondo, and then after Taekwondo last night, I didn't plug her in. But anyway, she got plenty of charge. So I don't have Don with me this morning because he um, went to have coffee with a co-worker of his. Uh, he helped onboard this gentleman um, earlier this year to work on the contract, one of the contracts he's working on with him. And the gentleman happens to be up here visiting family. So, you know, it's really great if you're working with someone remotely, if you've at least met them in person, that's always a good thing. So Don went to have coffee at K in Cary this morning and uh, he'll be back in time to start his normal work day. And he offered to walk with me later this afternoon and it is gonna be a pretty day, but I'd rather get up and go and and uh, get my walk in this morning while I know it's good for me. And uh, I decided what I'm going to do today is a little something different since I'm not gated by Don needing to get to work uh, on time. I am going to walk downtown Fuquay. Um, 
I'm gonna park down by Mineral Springs and just walk around Fuquay until I get two and a half, close to three miles, and then I'll come back to Ruby and, and head back to the house. Um, there'll be a little bit of shade. There'll be some not shade. Um, it may be louder than I want it to be. I don't know. I just thought it was worth trying since I have time to experiment. I really debated. I just figured I'd be lonely on the usual trail without Don, so why not go someplace I'm not used to walking with him and then it probably won't be so lonely. That was really what I was thinking that and you know always seeing a little different sight is appealing to me and something that's still close to home and all that good stuff. There's lots of people over here. I'm not worried about being on Jeff Wells trail by myself. Uh, on the other hand there's a ton of people over here so um, you know, in downtown walking around and stuff. So there is uh, some safety in numbers. Now I was going to park right here <laughs> and there's a lot of people here. Um, although it looks like the one family is getting in that car and getting ready to leave. So maybe if I slow up here, I can get that spot down on the end. I would like that. Or I could park right here with auto park. <laughs> Cars probably aren't close enough together to use auto park would be my guess. But I do think I can just, you know, since there's two huge spots here that I can handle this space myself. Even though I can't quite get to the end. I backed up and got myself closer to the curb. I'm pretty content. This is not a heavily traveled road. It doesn't even have a line down the middle of it. And uh, I'm not too worried about being super snug. I'm going to start by walking up straight ahead. I do have confirmed I've got Century on and my camera card is in the my my SD card is in the in the car in the right place so I think good. it would be a good idea if they had put in a sidewalk at least between the walkway there and the sidewalk down here on the curb um, but no sidewalk breeze out here this morning and I did remember to uh, start my walk on my watch almost forgot but I remembered I didn't realize I had started my walk walking uphill quite so much. It's not too bad though. Uh, this is the smaller Methodist church, the older one in town. A little local grocery here that has uh, changed hands a few times. I've been in there a time or two. The latest, newest apartment complex downtown. And this is uh, Spring Street here that runs on the back side of Main Street and back down the back side of Mineral Springs. Makes sense, right? Spring Street. This is Depot Street. You can see the crane and the new building up ahead. There is some public parking here uh, and shops on this side of the street and people use it. And there are train tracks in that direction, so I guess I don't know where the depot is on the um, marina side of town or Fuquay. Which side am I on? Anyway, I know where the depot is. Aviators in the depot on the other side of the railroad tracks. But there probably at one point was a depot on this side of the street too. Or this side of the tracks in the two little towns that merged Fuquay and Verena. I'm walking up the main street now here past Fidelity Bank which used to be like Fuquay Springs Bank or it was the newer building for the original Bank of Fuquay. I am going to cross the street here and go down to the next stoplight crosswalk did help me get across safely. Another view of the crane. I hear this uh, Fuquay Tire and Automotive Center, the old Goodyear place. I hear they do good work. Cultivate Coffee Shop and Vicious Fishes and the driver's license office. I crossed the street so I could walk in over here at the uh, Fuquay Marina Museum complex. There's a video on our channel from before COVID where Don and I took a tour. This is the old Valentine Schoolhouse, James D. Squire, circa 1875. Moved to this location from sort of down by the uh, Springs area. And the old U.S. Post Office building also moved. 
They had some really interesting postal equipment in there that we got to see. I'm only at like 0.5 miles so far, so I figured a little deviation over here to show the museum complex was in order. I see it would be nice to park maybe and come with my camera. There are quite a few varieties of lily over there. I don't remember what that building is, but this building over here is a tobacco barn they moved to the site to talk about, you know, the history of tobacco farming. Ghost Farmers is what this sculpture is called. Sculpture of old farm machinery parts from Burroughs, Scott, Snipes, Harris's in tribute to the myriad small tobacco farmers of Fuqua Verena artist Ben Harris. You may have seen when we go out the back way, we go past this artist's location and house and he has several pieces for sale and he's been making these pieces of art for some time. I like it. I like the reuse of materials that otherwise would end up in the landfill in an artistic manner. And then the town was super excited about the caboose over here. Wow, it's a really pretty butterfly bush. I don't see any butterflies on it this morning though. And the lack of butterflies again this year is quite disturbing. But uh, right after they painted it, it was bright and red and whatever paint they used, it really faded. It faded quick. Less than two years, less than a year. Still looks good though. I mean, it's not rusting, it's in good repair, but the, the paint just didn't stay caboose red very long. And you can see the picnic shelter, the playground, and then that building up there is the old library. But let me go back this way. There's also a little amphitheater here. This is basically, um, you know, parents bring their kids to play on the playground, although you're not supposed to climb on the caboose, so I question the location of the playground equipment. And the caboose, because kids see the caboose and they want to climb on it. I guess vandalizing it would be bad, but having a safe set of stairs where they could go peek in the window, to me, that seems like that probably should be allowed. But I don't make the rules. I do know how hard it is to keep kids that are curious away from things. These are very pretty. I like whatever that particular hydrangea is. That's one of those that has the large flowers and the small flowers all at once. It's not your typical hydrangea. But these lilies here are gorgeous. And there's a couple more of those pretty hydrangea off the back of the porch over there. All right, back out the way I came. Well, other side of the schoolhouse, but you get it. Cultivate um, has very little food items. There's a few pastries and sometimes they had ice cream. But it is a place you can go with your computer and certainly hang out for hours if you're looking for a place with good Wi-Fi. And a meeting spot and indoor and outdoor seating. And it is a really nice alternate to um, Stick Boy and The Mill, which are actually on Main Street proper basically just on the other side of that building. There's not a good designated crosswalk here by these businesses at all. Um, so you just look and be careful and since it's not too busy of a street, it's not too hard to cross. But uh, I thought it was worth me walking over here to show you this mural. I have a picture of Ruby one night where we came and we visited it. It's all zoo animals, or African animals, depending on your perspective, I guess. I like it. I was super stoked when I saw it show up. A little hard to uh, appreciate it, though, here down this alley. But I, I do really like it, and I would certainly be very pro other murals showing up around town in appropriate spots. Jace, Jason Thomas Clark, and there is not a title. I'd be interested to know his thoughts on the title. EMV and the museum share the old municipal building. <laughs> it's been that way for some time. We still have not heard about any plans for the old library building and what might go in there. I don't even know who owns it, the town, the county, I don't know. 
another view of the crane our constant uh, fixture around town these days like I said I think it's the first time in the whole time I've lived here that I've seen a large crane in the downtown Fuqua area. If you like antiques um, or little consignment booth places with a mix of vintage and new stuff K&B's Marketplace is an excellent place to go walk around. Bostick and Wilson out on Main Street would be more the official town antique store. Uh, this is the recently opened, renovated Fuqua Verena Art Center, um, with, complete with the nice mural of the train depot, which this is the one on the other side of the tracks that Aviator now um, is in, best as I understand it. I could be wrong. At any point, um, this used to be the old Belk store, and unless you live in the South, you probably don't know what Belk is, but Belk was a higher-end local town clothing store. And even when I first started coming to Fuquay in 93, Belk was still in that building. Here's a Fire Station 1. In the early 90s, if you came to eat dinner in Fuquay, really the only place to go eat that was popular was El Dorado restaurant and that's the building that it was in. I understand due to some family issues and competition between some sort of a family argument um, this particular location ran into disrepair however and became unpopular however they are currently renovating it with plans to reopen they're busy there doing stuff all the time, but the renovation is taking a super long time, so I don't know. You know, I'm sure it's expensive. If it opens and it gets good reviews, uh, I'm sure there would be some sort of a dish we could go in there and eat that, you know, fajitas basically that wouldn't, that we would feel okay about the, trying them out. Although neither one of my boys ever became huge um, Mexican food fans. Maybe uh, quesadilla. Well, this is the uh, prettiest line of crepe myrtles in the entire town in my opinion. Every year it looks beautiful. I do have a picture of Ruby one day. There was no cars parked. I parked her and took pictures from a couple of years ago. I love this color. Very pretty. You got to have a lot of sun for this tree. It will not tolerate partial shade and do much of anything. It just won't. I love that purple color hydrangea. It's a nice mix between the blue and the pink. We did get to tour that house on the Fuquay holiday home tour a couple of years ago and um, they often have a kitty in the sun parlor there. Now I would like to have walked down to Emmanuel Holiness Church in that direction and come up the other side but I've driven up that road a lot and there's no sidewalk and people out in the street is annoying and so I'm just not going to do that. But I would say that the town needs to add sidewalks there. It makes a nice additional loop. There are lots of homes down that way of those people that like to walk into town and there's no sidewalk, not even on one side of the street. Where here we, we have it on one side but not the other side. Besides, the homes on this street are very nice to look at, so, um, you know, no harm in walking this way. It's just that I could have made a slightly longer loop had I gone down by Emmanuel Holiness. Very pretty. Happy lead up to the 4th of July, everyone. Oh, speaking of 4th of July, I did learn that the town is holding their annual fireworks display this year. It was canceled last year due to COVID. Fuqua always holds theirs on July the 3rd. So if you want to come here on the 3rd, you can go to downtown Raleigh on the 4th. I did not look up what's going on with Raleigh. This is Lantana. Um, and then Holly Springs holds theirs on the 5th. So there have been some years where Don has been lucky enough to um, get to go to the fireworks three nights in a row. I don't know that we'll do that this year. But it's nice to have options if it rains, right? So we'll certainly plan to go to Fuquay. That can be a very last minute, hop in the car, go find a place to park, take the van, sl slam it in anywhere, and then, um, you know, 
uh, watch the work. They're supposed to go off at like 9.15 is what they're thinking, the town said. Little salvia. These are um, canna lilies. Very popular here. I particularly like this um, yellow variety with the orange specks. Much prettier than just the straight red that you used to see back in the day. It was the only basically kind there was. Looks so pretty up against the blue sky. Unfortunately, I'm only at 0.9 miles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk up Main Street to Revelry Barber Shop, which is where I came across. And uh, so all the way up and then all the way back. And that'll give me a little bit more. That is pretty. That is really pretty. I don't know what it is or I tell you. This is bee balm again. All of these flowers, they should be having butterflies. I haven't seen one butterfly the entire time. I know some people that knew me back in the day, I used to take so many butterfly pictures. I'm sure they were glad when I wasn't taking so many butterfly pictures, but a happy medium would be good. Um, the lantana came back and there's a couple zinnias in there, but it doesn't look like they really replanted the zinnias. They were mostly here. I stopped to take butterfly pictures here a lot last year. Um, and the zinnias were so pretty. They just repainted the town mascot. We had the taggers, tigers, taggers. We had them <laughs> in town. Like there were a whole bunch of different themed painted ones. And at the end of the display, the mayor, I guess, took the one that most matches the Bengal, which is the Fuqua Varina High School mascot. But they just recently took it away, repainted it, and put it back, which I thought was great. It's possible the original painting, paint used, lacquer, whatever, really wasn't meant to stand up to the weather. It looks quite shiny now. So I'm thinking it probably, probably is meant to stand the test of time this time. 30 little shops in there, new merchandise. Um, it's a nice place to go in and walk around every once in a while. Ashworth's here, old family name and business in town. The salon, the barber shop, and then Elmo's, which is now closed. Used to be if you wanted a suit in Fuqua, you either went to Elmo's or Ashworth. This is the old pharmacy building on the corner here is where the pharmacy was. Unfortunately, none of the pharmacy stuff remains. I guess you cross here, and then you're immediately supposed to use this other crosswalk, which I knew that the sidewalk here was closed, obviously. driver did stop for me. That was nice. Appreciated. It's not a great place to get left hanging for, for too long. So like I said, A.W. Thompson building, Elliott's Pharmacy, circa 1914. Elliott's Pharmacy operated for 75 years. Yeah. And the windows, last I knew, were not boarded up. And it's emptied out. They held little Christmas bazaars here, stuff sometimes. I imagine there's some lead-based paint in there they probably need to clean up. I wish somebody would come in and put something meaningful to the town here. There's one of the paintings from that uh, contest they have every year in town. And the mill and then Stick Boy on the other side of the street are owned by the same families. Here you can get beer. At, in the evenings and over there you can get um, obviously coffee and pastries but they move pastries over to the mill too and it's pizza we have three or four pizza places in town and everybody's got their favorite and I think they're all pretty good very pretty right down to the coleus oh wouldn't I like life to be a little different and I could go get a something sweet, both to drink and eat at Stick Boys. Johnny said he wanted to go there one time this summer and I'll probably take him and get a, some sort of an iced coffee sans sugar.
Here's Bostick and Wilson, the antique store. I probably will cross the street up here so that I can uh, show you the windows that you don't normally get to see when I drive Main Street. Revelry Barbershop here on the corner used to be, I believe it was Mitchell Automotive. I don't remember what they sold. Um, but I had done the time shift the one time of this building on a day when they had employee taken an employee picture. They were standing out front here going down the corner. And um, the building is an interesting piece of history. Yeah, here it says... Mitchell Chevrolet, founded in 1934, moved to this location in 1946, uh, was sold in 1993. And I drove past the farmer's market Saturday, um, first time we've noticed it back open since uh, they loosened up some of the requirements for the coronavirus. They sell things like homemade soaps and such there. Now this is Bostick and Wilson. I do enjoy walking in there from time to time. They're on vacation until Wednesday, June the 30th, it says. So don't come to Fuquay to go to Bostick and Wilson for the next week or so. Used to be the tea room. You would go down there and in the door and they had a tea room. I don't, I don't think the tea room is open anymore. I met some um, Fuqua Verena native there one time when I was young and probably didn't have appropriate um, appreciation for a tea room. And this is Stick Boy up here on the left where the people are, but you've got to cross here. And I would say that people have been doing a good job crossing and stopping. And like other sidewalk. people though, I actually stopped look both ways and made sure I wasn't walking out in front of anyone. Not how everyone in town handles the crosswalks. Act like it's their God-given right to just walk out in the middle of the street and have you slam on your brakes at any t given time. I call that an accidental death wish. Make eye contact with drivers. Don't act like people owe you. Be defensive in your crossing so that you don't get hurt. Yep, the mill. They also have a upstairs section. I'm sure you couldn't see through the glass. And people also hang out in there with their computers. Sick Boy doesn't have the room for that. They only have like eight tables inside over there. This is the latest and greatest mural in town. I've shown it to you before. I do really like it. Um, four little businesses down below including downstairs vintage and the treasure chest both of which if they were open I would pop into but they're not open yet I've been in the treasure chest before well, it is summertime some more grass cutting wow the breeze out here today I know today's audio is not going to be great I'm sorry my goodness there's a half a second of quiet Ruby is just over there on the other side of those trees, but I'm going to walk up around the block and back down to her. Cross to the other side and there's a sidewalk over there. And I guess you get up over here and there's no sidewalk except to cut back across through the park. Um, so I guess I'll play, play nice and walk to the other side of the street. These two houses here, the one I just went past and the one I'm going past now, they really do need a little work done to them. Um, but this one here, there's guys here all the time now restoring it. So I can't wait to see what it looks like when they're done. It sat empty, but boarded up in a protective manner for some time and I'm really pleased that they now have a chance to do something with it. When they leave for the night, they board it back up. When they come in the morning, they open it up for some air. Oh, and there on the table there, you can see the plans for whatever they're doing. Very nice. It's going to be pretty. Home also needs some work. I don't believe it's being lived in right now. A tree came down on the porch 
that's within the last year the front porch obviously is pretty bad off hopefully hopefully they'll fix it up and not tear it down I mean it's got potential a lot of these other houses up the street one by one they've been uh, they've been repaired so this is where I would cross back over to get to Ruby but there's no crosswalk here and um, there's also no sidewalk there I mean I think this little side street is safe so I'm probably just gonna do that plus I can duck into the town recreation office building this historic building over here and walk through the parking lot if I want to get back to maybe a slightly safer walking situation yes I vote for town commissioners to have to walk downtown because how are they going to learn about things they need to fix and repair and do better if uh, they don't do that oh that's a red-headed woodpecker oh I don't have my big camera oh wow he's on that American holly tree I don't know why he would be on that but he's moved around to the back side I'm Oh, he's up in the tree in there. I mean, for me to see an actual red-headed woodpecker is about a once or twice a summer thing. They're much more shy than the red-bellied or even the pileated. I'm looking for him. I don't see him anymore. Wow. Front, go through the cut through the parking lot there but since the woodpecker brought me around this direction but see again we've got we've got no sidewalks and when we hold the ice cream festival and other events down here at mineral springs people park up here and they walk down and that means they're walking in the street good morning, Hi, good morning. but if we could uh get some town commissioners maybe to walk downtown like I did today they would go oh yeah you know that's not the safest place to walk we want our kids to be out and getting exercise and able to go over to stick boy by themselves well we need to have a little bit a little bit better I realized back in the day we didn't have all of that but also back in the day we didn't have cement trucks going down Main Street Fuquay at 25 or 30 mile an hour either so sidewalks are a good thing bike lanes are a good thing too but you got to start with sidewalks I think besides that one section of Main Street with the way the buildings are it's never going to be any wider and it's not wide enough for a bike lane in that particular spot so and you shouldn't be going but 25 there so if a bike wants to get out in traffic well you just slow down I'm at 53 minutes and only 1.7 miles thank you Ruby I do have two sentry mode uh, alerts I am going to assume that that is um, just people that walked by but let's check it out before I leave I didn't really scrutinize walk around the car and scrutinize so I would say one of them is um, I guess get it down here closer to the red dot just show me what happened please I think one of it is just probably this person is not in front of me anymore they probably came got in their car and left yeah I would like I appreciate that it records footage before um, but I and in, in this case it did start playing so here's somebody on the right here probably coming to their or leaving or coming to their car or whatever so it saw that as a century and they really they really were not close to the car here comes another person down from the other side so she is going and get it in her car and I had left her and it jumped I hate it when it does that but it did it jumped um so I think there were says there were two so this is maybe 906 a.m. and 941 a.m. 906 could be me this could just be me um I don't really see a I don't really see a yeah I'm not sure what that's trying to tell me so that was a recent this was a century I saw her getting in the car 
what was this one? Okay, so this was someone walking up in front. These are the people I passed and waved at, I think, as I went up the street. Yeah, they probably had their dog a little too close to the side of people's cars, if I had to say. Yep, the dog sort of bumped my car as they went past did not jump or scratch or claw or bark or anything but I would go so far as to say the dog touched my car and when you go past people's cars you should not allow that to happen. We'll watch it one more time if I can get it closer. There's me leaving right and I did go past these people I, you know, spoke to them. They spoke to me, so it jumped. Well, obviously, I don't think any harm was done to the car. Um, I do think people should give cars a little wider berth with their animals probably would be more courteous. What I learned is don't park in front of this walkway here. Definitely park the other side of it because people come out there and then they want to go this direction typically. And, um... If I was on the other side of it, there would be less people tempted to walk around the car because there's no sidewalk. I am here at South Park. It's just after 10 a.m. The splash pad is open. A mom with a blue Model 3 just showed up with her kids to take them to the splash pad. Um, I am going to walk to the end of the trail where the lift station is close to the house and then back up over here. Uh, that should get me an additional mile and get me closer to my daily uh, step goal and exercise goal and all that good stuff. It is really odd to have a cool breeze in June. I mean it's almost July. Uh, I think I heard tonight's low was going to be 57. That would also be probably not a record but obviously not the typical nightly low for June. So I guess that's why we're having all of this uh, wind today because it's bringing in that cooler air. A little bit turbulent atmosphere. We have rain chance later in the week but I, I don't think today oops I forgot to start my outdoor walk where are you Donnie when I need you to remind me well at least I caught it here and not when I'm back to Ruby and go to turn it off right so I've lost several hundred steps on the walk but not on my daily goal so but yeah I lost a little bit there oops all right I made it not that I was worried. Uh, I did see on ring that Don is home. Let's see how I think feel about this on the way back to the parking lot since that's mostly uphill. <laughs> Obviously I could have walked the walking track. I could have parked at the environmental park and come in on this end and back out on this end. But uh, I wanted shade. I guess I wanted to, I love the kids on the splash pad, but not while I'm walking and trying to get my relaxation on, I guess. I'm envious of them when I get back to the parking lot. Let me tell you, I'd like to go get underneath the bucket. All right, I'm back to Ruby. I'll look at the stats once I sit down and stop my walk. Thank you, Ruby. did have climate on in here so it's not too hot 26 minutes 35 seconds 1.1 miles 123 beats per minute right now stopping my walk and I'm at 9,055 steps and my exercise firework ring just went off so that's good <sighs> yeah now I feel like I've exercised I enjoy downtown don't get me wrong but between crossing the street and, you know, having to wait for the crosswalks and stuff, it wasn't a particularly fast or, I don't know, heart-raising workout. But I enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. I would do it again this fall sometime, probably. Marty and Morris are having a little morning snack. I noticed them rubbing heads and being sweet to each other, kind. Of course, Marty won't hesitate to shove Morris out of the way for the food bowl, though. But at least most of the time I see them getting along well. And even when they aren't, it's, you know, trivial not getting along not versus a real problem. Johnny's agreed to go kayaking with me. Part of the agreement was mom make me my pasta with the apple gouda sausage and lots of parmesan and yellow cheese. 
So uh, Johnny and I had Tux in, brushed him down, gave him his antibiotic. He loves having that liquid squirted down his throat, not. But he doesn't kill us, but we do have to hold him. And the good news is, is no sign of infection in any of the bite wounds. So uh, he's doing good. Johnny's just giving him some TLC. He loves being in here with Johnny, but I have to check him for fleas and ticks every time we bring him in to make sure everything is good. So Johnny and I are on our way to Lake Wheeler. Um, our float, you know, kayak rental time is 2 p.m. So we're going to get there about 1.50. That's fine. We won't have to park more than a couple minutes away from where we go check in. And uh, it's a 90-minute session, up to 90 minutes. And uh, Lake Wheeler is basically a mile from Yates Mill. So it's a similar, similar distance. I usually allot 30 minutes. So uh, the sky's really pretty out there today. Ruby says it's 78 degrees. Johnny went outside and goes, wow, mom, it is really nice out there. And I'm, yeah, like I don't agree to go out on the water in the middle of the summer, in the middle of the day, unless it's pretty nice. Um, I've got the hat I bought for Dawn at Guardian Angel that actually has a piece of fabric that comes down over my neck. So that should be quite helpful. And I bought one of those towels that if my legs are getting too much sun I can throw the wet towel over top of my legs like we did the last time we floated on the raft and I think it'll be a good time we have up to 90 minutes but if um you know we stay out we just don't stay out I, I know 90 minutes when you're having fun can go pretty quick though so and here's the turn for Lake Wheeler this is not the way I like to come but we are you know needing to get there and this is two or three minutes shorter than the direction I probably would have preferred which is just simply more scenic we're here i'm so excited i'm so excited are you excited too yes good hey johnny we're loaded up we're out here the sky is phenomenal of course i'm not kayaking at the moment so i'm drifting and uh, i am so excited to be out here this is great we do have up to 90 minutes. I have my Apple Watch on. I have my phone and a zip, zippy bag, a water safe bag around my neck. And uh, it sure is pretty. And it's calm and it's quiet out here too. We're meandering. We're enjoying it out here. We're taking it easy. We both have like one of these wet towel things on our feet so we don't get sunburned. I'll move mine around in a little bit. We're shooting for, you know, basically those trees down there and back in 90 minutes. But we're, we're not in any particular rush. We're just enjoying ourselves out here on the water. It's very relaxing. Yay. There is a little bit of a breeze. I've said that a couple times today. It's unclear to me exactly. I think it's moving us this way. So coming back may be harder than getting down there. We'll see. Well, I do think that the um, GoPro with the voice commands is awesome to have out here on the water. There is a great blue heron. I need to, I need to, can I one arm? <laughs> uh, probably not really, but there he is. Let's see if I can get closer. His wings were really quiet when he did that. I'm a surprise. Crash into you? Nope. <laughs> I won't knock you over, I can't promise about. Oh, you put yourself in the wrong direction. Bye. So the guys, the attendants, the young summer kid workers that put us out here, they said only single person flotation devices are for rent. So kayaks, paddle boards, but no canoes this summer. Because they didn't used to have kayaks here. They only had canoes. Uh, which I had a canoe one day with the boys and me out here. I'm pretty sure Johnny was in the center, not paddling. And my older son was trying to help with the paddling up front and doing a great job. And 
Um, then for a while, they would only allow two people in the boat, even if one was a small kid. So that was kind of a problem if I wanted to come by myself. But anyway, if you want to rent a kayak this summer, no problem because uh, they've got plenty of those. Yeah, it's particularly nice out here with uh, the breeze. It's kind of partly cloudy, so we're getting breaks from the sun. Splash a little water up on you. It's quiet over here. I mean, it's just... It's a really nice time out here on the water. I wouldn't say I'm not having any pain at all in my back or my shoulders, but I'm not having anything that's too troublesome. And the pain I'm having in my back is actually up above where my cyst would be. So it's not, um, not concerning from that perspective. And you can see we made it around that little peninsula. We're out here pretty, pretty good. It's uh, 2.30, so in about 15 minutes, we'll head back the other way. Well, I worked pretty hard to get across. I just wanted to actually make it to the other bank, although I picked the peninsula, right? It's a little choppy. I had to work a little bit. My heart rate was at 115, so obviously it wasn't putting me under too much duress. I would say between my index finger and my thumb on both hands, how you hold the oar um, is, you know, a little, a little pain, but not much pain. And for that view and time out here on the water with Johnny, I would go through a lot. Highly recommend it. It's only just a few other people out here. So actually, wait, turn this way. You want to race in the wrong direction. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the only good, I mean, there's a perfect buoy over there. All right, I, I'm game if you're game. I won. I know, I just want you to know that I went all out. That was everything I had. I did not let you win. So you, you beat me fair and square. I was, I really, I was as fast as I could go. Good job. I mean, I was as fast as I could go. <laughs> Let's see what my watch says. My watch will tell the story. It's thinking right now. I might have got measuring my heart rate, measuring my heart rate. Sometimes it's slow. There might be a little water underneath there too. 117. So my heart has more to give, but not my arms. <laughs> but this is good because mom's been working other muscles and now today you're helping your mom get an upper body workout. So that's good. It's really good actually. Pretty small helicopter. We're getting back to where you can see the boathouse. So this is actually a city of Raleigh Park. Um, Bass Lake is town of Holly Springs. Yates Mill is, I don't think it's city of Raleigh. I think it's like privately funded. Anyway, uh, Lake Johnson would be another city of Raleigh Park. So the same rules, the same way we've signed up our reservation for here would apply to Lake Johnson. So I just discovered, realized what I was looking at, both of our kayaks have a GoPro mount up there at the front. And I guess you could point it forward or you could point it behind you. And uh, I don't have a mount here with me. I have my GoPro in an orange uh, silicone waterproof flotation sleeve on a rope around my neck. But now I know because I got two GoPros and I got lots of mounts and we could have just put one of them out there and that would have been pretty pretty cool. I could have time lapsed it. That probably would have been the thing to do to time lapse the whole canoe trip on one of the GoPros that mounted out front. So I guess we'll have to come back sometime, Johnny. <laughs> exactly. So we're approaching the boathouse. There's a gentleman with his golden retriever, which you probably can't see over here on the bank throwing the tennis ball. Johnny's done a fantastic job out here in the kayak today. Very pleased. And we're approaching the dam. It's not a big dam, but you could go over it if you weren't being smart. Didn't know it was there, etc., etc. It's pretty well marked and pretty visible, but still. There's a black dog and a golden dog over there. Probably both labs or a golden and a lab. They're having a grand time swimming and chasing after their toy in the water. You can
can see the boathouse clearly now. These two on the paddle boards, they went out right before us. The gentleman says it's easier than it looks. I said, yeah, that's what my husband says about the unicycle too, and I can't ride that either. <laughs> well, there's a good picture of the view of the boathouse, the little ramps where you can launch your own boats. Lake Roller Road is basically where just the other side of the dam wall. Helping Johnny get out. I'll move on in. Well, we made it the whole 90 minutes out there. It was a lot of fun. We're both wore out though. My back hurts like halfway up on this side a little bit. However, the life preserver and the thing was, I think the kayaks I've been in before where your feet are sort of covered, they were, are a little more comfortable for me than this one. But this was a Jackson Riviera and it actually besides having the GoPro mount it actually had GoPro advertisement on it So it's, it's really meant for that. Like I said next time time-lapse GoPro um, This worked great. I didn't put I have on any sunscreen um, Except for in the mornings now. I'm putting a little on my forehead and the tip of my nose But um, so this I have bought at Guardian Angel totally kept the back of my neck covered Which I was happy about and those towels you can wet and lay on an arm or a leg that's getting hot Maybe I wish I'd have bought two, but I, I'm not burnt, so it was good. A um, lot of fun, few other families out there, and um, you know, we did, we made the 90 minutes for $7.50 each. I think that was pretty fair. I think that was good. So, got to be 16 plus though, and no families this year because they're not renting canoes. You can go in with your own equipment and just pay the launch fee though. Um, so you could you could come here with your own canoe or kayaks or whatever lake wheeler park yeah yates mill is wake county lake wheeler is city of raleigh they're technically both in wake county and i don't know how that differentiation came to be but that's what it was it came to me that um yates mills wake county all right holing cow dairy here at the nc state creamery here we come see cows lots of cows so it's a two scoop cookie dough sundae with whipped cream, cherries, and gummy worms on top. It looks pretty yummy.